Uh, we're, this is session 12 of uh, Divine Appointments with God. Uh, just to give you an update, we are leaving for Israel three weeks from today. today. Yes. So, and of um, course you're going to teach that day too that you're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> we, we will be in the air somewhere over northern Canada. About <laughs> time, so. yeah, we go from here to Frankfurt. There's always well, space well, space. Yeah. Can we have <laughs> our session uh, on the plane? You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you can stream the plane. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of toyed with the idea of uh, doing a remote from Israel. You guys could meet here and you know, with the house sitters, and then uh, <laughs> teach the lesson from there, but it would be 2 a.m. Sunday morning for us. <laughs> so, so, I so. Idea. <laughs> What's your point? Yeah. So. We, we do plan to maybe uh, do some exactly. short video blogs while we're there, so yeah. um, so watch either our website or Facebook. Yeah, we're, we were we'll discussing that last night. You know, we're going to go to places like Hebron and Shiloh and stuff, mm -hmm. and so we will do some uh, video blogs from those sites. Mm, so we'll be, so awesome. be posting yeah. them on our website. Yeah. Yeah. And awesome. so you can tune in and, and see. So they'll, they'll be up within a day or two of our actual visit to those places. Mm. So we're taking the majority of our equipment with us to be able to wow. do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, several, so, several years ago, and yeah, we've been trying to get to Israel for a long time, but it's never been quite the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the right time. Uh, yes. But at one time when we were, you know, thinking that we were going to be going to Israel, we actually wrote a series of lessons teaching about the land of Israel. Oh. Looking at Israel, looking at Jerusalem, looking at Bethlehem, looking at Shechem, Shechem and looking at Hebron. All of those cities as being a shadow of Messiah. You know, mm. what is the shadow in each one of those places? Yeah. You did the so. one in Shechem, right? Did you do any? Yeah. That we did in... Mm -hmm. in do yeah, it's in volume four. They're, it's in, they're all in volume too? four. They're all in volume oh, four in, in uh, Shadows of Messiah and the Torah. Mm -hmm. But, um, cool. mm -hmm. so I imagine we'll probably touch on some and of And they do have all those books on sale if anybody that does not yes. know yet is interested. Yes. Yes, those are, yeah, so you can get those on our mm -hmm. website at Amazon and or at El Shaddai or on the shelf. Or on the shelf. <laughs> if you're here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, uh, anything <coughs> else that we needed to update? I think I that's about think we're it. Good. So we're, we probably will get through Yom Kippur in the next three sessions, including today. And then wherever we leave off, we will pick it up again probably the third week in August. Is that what Did we, we say the third week? I think so. The, the third, third or the third, fourth. But yeah. Third or fourth week. We'll, we'll get you after David on that. Because we want to finish this entire series uh, by the time we get through the, uh, the fall feasts. So if we finish Yom Kippur, we'll just have uh, Sukkot and Sabbath to go through. That should, should be, be an additional five, maybe six weeks. Mm -hmm. Hopefully five. Depends on how much talking we do. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and... I meant I missed something. <laughs> I, have to speak up. I said, I guess I'll leave now. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, Carol, I have some Seahawks masking tape in my bag. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Seahawks. Okay. okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'll open with a prayer and we'll get into the, today's lesson. Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you've given us, the, the time that you've given us here on your Sabbath, one of your divine appointments to gather and to study your word. Just uh, open our hearts and our minds to your Torah, in Yeshua's name, amen. 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 So we're, we're starting at part B today, at the bottom of page 94, and we will see how far we get. So um, let me go up to slide number 10, I think it is, right here, it will be our first slide for today. So go ahead and... Start. Can we start? Yeah. Okay, so we're looking at the historical background for Yom Kippur. <coughs> so in that first year when the children of Israel had come out of Egypt, they of course journeyed to Mount Sinai where they received the Ten Commandments. And then we've got Moses running up and down. We have the golden <laughs> calf. Okay, <coughs> Moses again taking the, the tent of meeting, which was his tent outside the camp and fasted and prayed for the children of Israel for a second 40-day period. 
And then, you know, God calls him back up on the mountain for the third 40-day interval. And at the end of that 40 days, Moses comes down the mountain. Um, so when Moses went up Mount Sinai for that second day, second 40 days, it was on a low one. And I guess I said that already. Before going up on Mount Sinai, Moses moved his tent out of the camp. At that time, God's mm -hmm. presence was with them. We still had the, the cloud and of the pillar of fire at night. But it was not among them. It was outside the camp mm -hmm. instead of in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. So their future is still uncertain. They don't know what's going to happen. Will God forgive them? Will God mm -hmm. take them or keep them as his people? So in Jewish tradition, those final 10 days that, um, actually we need to transition just a little bit because Moses goes back up on the mountain for the 40 days and those final 10 days that Moses is up on the mountain for the second time are called the days of awe. And these are a time of waiting for one's fate to be decided. Okay? It is a time to set things right between yourself and others. Forgiveness is sought. Debts are paid. Restitution is made. And isn't it awesome how it always connects with what Pastor Mark was talking about on Saturday. Didn't he talk today about the restitution? Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, you confess your sins, step one, you pay any redemption price, okay? Then you go before God. Then you go before God and know that your sins are forgiven. Yeah. You don't take okay. a sin offering until after this. Is right. Death. Okay. So. So the Bible describes the days of waiting before Moses goes back up to Mount Sinai. So we're going to look at those 40 days that Moses had taken the tent of meeting and put it outside the camp. Let's take a, a look, you know, a snapshot of time and look to see what's going on here. Okay, they're uh, looking at Exodus uh, 33, 4 through 11. There's four slides here. We'll start at the head table with Mickey, and we'll just snake right okay, around. Okay, so here. each one of you guys gets a slide to start with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Mickey. And when the people heard this bad news, they mourned, mm -hmm. and no one put on his ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. I could come up into your midst in one moment and consume you. Now therefore take off your ornaments, that I may know what to do to you. Mm -hmm. So the children of Israel stripped themselves of the ornaments by Mount Horeb. Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle, tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. So it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle, that all the people rose, and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. <coughs> and it came to pass, <coughs> when Moses entered the tabernacle, that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend, and he would return to the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. I think there is actually, nope, that was it. That's it? Oh. Yep, yeah. through 11, okay. So how does this passage show the Israelites' uncertainty about their fate? Well, what's the first thing they did? They stood outside their tents and watched. Mm -hmm. They stood outside their tents and watched. They wanted to know what was going on all the time. They kept their eye on Moses. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. Moses went out to the tent of tabernacle. They're watching. <laughs> Moses came back in. They're watching. Mm -hmm. The pillar of cloud came down. They're watching. Okay, and of course. God also said, hey, take off your ornaments. Let me think about what to do with you guys. He said, you take off your ornaments and I'll 
think about this. I think that was back here in verse 5. Okay. Yeah. God said, I could consume you in a moment. You guys show a little repentance here. Let me think about this. <laughs> okay. Have you said that to your kids before? <laughs> I'm not ready to deal with this. You guys go hang out in your room for a little while. And then I'm <laughs> done thinking about it. We'll decide. <laughs> can't do that when you're really mad at your kids and you're afraid that you're going to overreact. <laughs> okay. And of course, what was their response whenever the Shekinah glory appeared? Did they take it for granted? They immediately what? <clears throat> Fell on their faces. They prostrated themselves before God. And of course, it's also we have an uncertainty because where was God's presence? It's outside, outside the camp. Yeah. So a lot of uncertainty there. Now, Moses goes after the 40 days, goes up on Mount Sinai, and then he comes back down after another 40 days. Gosh, there's a lot of 40 days, three 40-day periods here. So Moses returns from the mountain on the Day of Atonement, bringing word that God had truly forgiven them. Okay? What physical evidence did he bring to show that they had been forgiven, and what verbal instructions were they given? So let's take a look at Exodus 34, 1 and 2, and then we're going to skip down to 29 to 32. And the Lord said to Moses, Cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I will write on these tablets the words that were broke on the first tablets which you broke. So be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. Okay, and Robert? Now it was so, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and the tab two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Let me go ahead and finish it. <clears throat> then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. <clears throat> Afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. Okay, so what did he bring? Yeah, yeah. yeah the new, new tablets, right, mm -hmm. to replace the old ones. Mm -hmm. And what instructions were they given? Moses had words for them. What did he tell them? Same thing he told them before, right? <laughs> All the commandments that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai, Moses relayed that information to them. So they were given those instructions. And then as we skip up to Exodus 35, 4, and 11, we have some information about an offering. So. 4 through 11. And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to the Lord, whatever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord, gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, and goat's hair. One more time. There we go. Um, go ahead. I think wrens, uh, skins dyed red, badgered skins, and acacia wood, uh, oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. All who are gifted artisans among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. In the tabernacle, its tent, its covering, its clasps, its boards, its bars, its pillars, and sockets. Yeah, and it could go on and on and on, but we've got the relevant information here. What were they going to build with this offering? They were going to build a tabernacle. Okay. So, and this, of course, is when he comes down, he's giving these instructions. This day is on Yom Kippur, which is Tishri 10. Okay. Now, temporary dwellings, or Sukkot, are built for the Feast of Tabernacles, which begins five days after Yom Kippur. And the Jewish people start building their Sukkot the very evening Yom Kippur ends because Moses gave instructions for building God's tabernacle when he returned from Mount Sinai on Yom Kippur. Hmm. Yeah. So, and of course the people of Israel will live in the Sukkot, the, te the temporary dwelling places 
for the duration of the feast. And so that's why you start building it as soon as Yom Kippur is over. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Big question. Uh huh. They, um, because it's a lunar calendar and they add extra months, mm -hmm. they must, my impression is they must never add it like during these set periods. Correct. Okay. Yeah. The, the extra month is always added in, in the spring or as the spring is approaching. So, <coughs> you're always looking to see when that redemption is new. It's kind of neat when you stop and think about it. You know, redemption we're talking about is new growth, is, is you know, bringing on uh, new life, freedom, freedom <laughs> deliverance. Mm -hmm. And it's marked in your calendar by the beginning or the start of spring. So, spring isn't here yet. <coughs> if the barley is not yet ripening, then they're going to have an additional leap month, mm -hmm. a whole extra month, okay? And only begin then the month of Nisan, which is our beginning of the <coughs> redemption calendar, beginning of the redemption month, um, when the barley is beginning to ripen. <coughs> yeah. Isn't they declared a new month? <coughs> yep. Or a leap month. Yeah. Now it's, 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 of course, done by calculation, yeah. and it comes at specific yeah. times, right. which are listed in the beginning of the... Of your manual, yeah, and the, yeah, but yeah. It talks about the yeah. calendar dates. Yeah. So how long did it take them to build it? <coughs> uh, the tabernacle. They actually they completed at the beginning of Nissan the following year. So we're looking at roughly oh, yeah. what is that? Six months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six months. Okay. Yeah, so just start, under. Yeah, they started in the fall and completed it by the next Passover. Right. So they're starting in, in the <coughs> middle of of the seventh month and they finish it bef by the end of the twelfth month. So just yeah. under six months to finish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So we, Brenda mentioned, you know, spring and the new growth and stuff and it just reminded me, I've been, I've been <laughs> doing a lot of landscaping work yeah. out here, trying to, you know, whip things into shape and trimming them up and, and I noticed something very interesting about the wisteria uh -huh. out there. <laughs> It, it sends out these sprouts that try to, you know, because it's a vine, and tries to reach everything. And so I cut it off. Uh -huh. I cut off the, the shoot that's coming out. And then wait a few days later, and all of a sudden there's three more. <laughs> 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 you know, so it, it's kind of like a hydra. You know, you can't, you can't keep up. You know, if you go look at it, I just trimmed it three days ago. <laughs> and they're all over the place. Oh you know, so. yeah. Sharon, and I find it interesting, those are also called volunteers. And aren't we mm -hmm. all volunteers? Yeah. And aren't we all supposed to Just keep going. reproduce yeah. and reach out? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Maybe, maybe they're a pain in the neck. Speak <laughs> 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 for yourself. <laughs> no, okay. okay. Anyway, I was wondering where they got all their stuff. That's not in your book here, but where did, you, where did they get all of this the stuff? Egypt. Okay, remember, Egypt. they Egypt. plundered they Egypt, Egypt before oh. they left. Yeah. Yeah. They took all that stuff with them. So when you stop and think about it, they didn't leave Egypt with maybe just a knapsack on their backs. Okay, They would have had to have had wagons to carry everything that they took with them. Remember they had all their flocks as well? Mm, right. All the flocks went with them and they've got to have food for the flocks. Mm -hmm. Okay, they've got to have necessary stuff for their cattle and they've got all of their stuff that they went with them. Yeah, they left in a hurry, but they did not leave empty handed. Yeah. I always wonder though how they fed those flocks for four years. <laughs> they didn't oh, exactly eat manna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe they did like manna. Cows like a lot of water. Yeah, <laughs> they do like a lot of water. Yeah, yeah. The miracles in the wilderness are pretty amazing. <laughs> Some, somebody figured out the logistics of probably about th three million people, yeah. plus the cattle and all of that. Logistically, what would that take in sheer tonnage every day to you know, feed them? Wow. You know, so, it's mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like a mile-long yeah. train every day. But yeah. since people also need water and the wa and the manna took care of everything, and perhaps the manna took mm -hmm. care of the cattle. Who knows? Who knows? Mm -hmm. yeah. I uh, have, have I read that they've done a study, and it would, it would take about a three-and-a-half-mile freight train every single day. 
So it's a good thing God brought it from the rock and from down from Mount Yeah, well, the water came from the rock. Yeah. So they had the manna to eat, but they needed the water. Right. Yeah. So this okay. isn't the rock you put in your pocket. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Paul says it followed him around, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go into part C. Part C. Observance in the time of Yeshua. So Le Leviticus 16 details the requirements of the tabernacle uh, observance on the Day of Atonement. So these requirements were followed closely during the Second Temple era at the time of Yeshua. So we read in this chapter, so as we read in this chapter, we will learn what animals are offered, in what order, and the purpose of each. We'll follow the actions of the high priest and learn how atonement is made for the Holy of Holies, the altar, and for the people. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look first at Leviticus 16, 1 through 6. I think there's three slides here. <coughs> Who's on our George? Now the Lord spoke <laughs> to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered profane fire before the Lord and died. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron your brother not to come at just any time into the holy place inside the veil, before the mercy seat which is on the ark, lest he die. For I will appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. Thus Aaron shall come into the holy place with the blood of a young bull as a sin offering, and of a ram as a burnt offering. He shall put the holy linen tunic and the linen trousers on his body. He shall be girded with a linen sash, and with a linen turban he shall be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore he shall wash his body in water and put them on. And Carol. And he shall take from the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats as a sin offering and one ram as a burnt offering. Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. Okay, so let's answer this question. How does the high priest prepare to enter the holy place, and what offerings was he to bring? He first has to pay it before mm -hmm. he can put on any of the holy garments. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, he, and, he and he puts on the holy linen garments. garments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. White. Yes, so they're not the colorful decorative <laughs> garments of the high priest. They're the linen garments that are white that show, you know, not his high office, but instead his lone, lowly position. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, kind of a purity thing. They're white. And, so. what, and what was he to bring? <laughs> oh, go, go ahead, Carol. You had some. But. I'm just kind of going back to where we were just before this, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the rock, yeah, and how the rock follows us around, and how they they saw these miracles going on before them. Yeah, a rock that follows them around, <laughs> and manna that fed you know all of them and uh, and all of their sheep and all of this stuff, and and yet it became second place to them. I mean, it was like they didn't pay any attention to it. Mm -hmm. And how, and I was just thinking about me and how I see all these miracles around me mm -hmm. every day, the, the changing of the seasons and the green and the rain and all those things that are miracles that, that to me, I just look for and expect. Mm -hmm. And yet, mm -hmm. it is the presence of Almighty God mm -hmm. that is with us. Mm -hmm. If we will just recognize that and right. not put him outside the tent and mm -hmm. just sort of outside the, your camp and just say, right. well, I'll look at you when my... Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, one thing, there's a parallel there. We also need to look, a look at how the Lord, the Lord blessed Israel and the Lord has blessed our nation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the parallel, when we don't worship the Lord in a parallel, when you know, what's going on. So her example is, is perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all those blessings were there. Yeah, um, yeah so, so he, yeah, he washes and puts on the garments, as uh -huh. she said. Mm -hmm. 
Can I ask one more question? Yes. Yeah. What's the significance of linen? Why not? Why not wool? They had lots of sheep and everything. Yeah. What's the deal about linen? I don't know. That's a good question. Good question. Uh, I hadn't thought of that before. I think it comes from flax, yeah. doesn't it? Man has says it's not common, right. but if it's, if black, it's holy, it's set it. aside. Linen right. was not That's a part. common huh. product. Wool That's was true. common. Yeah. So linen would have been a special. Yes. Okay. So so linen would have been special. How that makes hard sense. to manufacture a garment? Yeah. Linen. Yeah. I mean, wool is there all the time, Wayne. What did they make it out of? What was linen? I think it's kind of flax. Linen is made from flax. But it's a grass, it's flax. It's a, a, spe a specific kind of plant called flax. Yeah. They beat it and they would, you can, I think they, you, you can look it up on the net that they actually beat it in some type of hammering. And then a, and you get these fibers and then those are woven together into, into the fabric. You have to actually wash and and yeah. soak them and beat them and yeah. so that they're flexible so that you can do you know weave them or thread them together yeah it's it's a, an involved process that uh -huh. speaks hugely of humility yeah being beaten and mm -hmm. and totally destroyed basically in order mm -hmm. to make another mm -hmm. A yeah. garment out of it and linen breeds it doesn't uh, well so does wool but wool you don't have to beat and Right. I mean, There's it's just that, you still have to just when you said that, I just saw mm -hmm. the holiness of, yeah. of, of what, mm -hmm. how that would cause them to become holy. To be destroyed and brought back into a new and different life. Right. It, yeah. Beat okay. up and... So that's, that's what we think. It would take more well, research to look at it, but that's certainly a good thought. You know, that it's not common. Wool mm -hmm. is common and linen was not. So it was a special garment. Um, let's let's finish with what offerings he was to bring. I don't think we hit that. Sin offering. Bull. What are the bulls? Okay, a young bull and two young goats and a ram. Okay. So, yeah. So the young bull and the two goats were what kind of offering? Sin. Well, one is sin offering. One is sin and one is burnt. Okay. There's a burnt offering. A ram is a burnt offering. So the bull is actually the sin offering for himself. Okay? Mm -hmm. And for his house. So that's yeah. for the priesthood. When? I think it's significant that Aaron was not allowed to come just whenever mm -hmm. he wanted mm -hmm. to. Yeah. I think that's significant for us in approaching God. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like yeah. when we moved the ark, we never right. Right. that. Right, right. Yeah. The book of Hebrews tells us now that we can approach God right. at any time. The veil across the Holy of Holies has been opened, mm -hmm. the way has been opened for us to approach him at any time. So, but no, Aaron couldn't. Okay. So the high priest uh, mm -hmm. cast lots for which of these two young goats is for the Lord and which for Azazel, or the, the scapegoat. So it was considered a good omen when the lot for the goat of the Lord came up in the priest's right hand. A scarlet thread is, is tied around the horn of the goat for Azazel as part of the same thread would then be tied around the door handle of the temple and the goats are set aside. <coughs> let's, uh, before we go on here, let's look at Leviticus 16 7 through 10. There's two slides here. Okay, he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the meeting. Then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And one for Aaron shall bring the goat on which the Lord's lot fell and offer it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it mm -hmm. and to let it go as the scapegoat into the wilderness. Are we doing okay on volume back there, David? All the readers? Okay. Yeah. Do do keep in mind as you're reading that the microphone is here and okay. the people on the internet need to hear as well. Okay? Okay, so the bull is offered for the sin offering for the high priest in his house. Okay? 
you kind of don't think the high priest is going in there and he has he has to offer a sin offering. Mm. So Aaron's house mm -hmm. uh, would include his sons. So as the generation continued, the house of Aaron included all the priests. So after the confession of sin, the high priest would pronounce the name of God and all the people would prostrate themselves and say, blessed be his sovereign name forever and ever. Mm -hmm. and this is the mm -hmm. only day that the name of God is said out loud. Mm -hmm. Mm. And they would actually say the name, not mm -hmm. Hashem, not Adonai. They actually mm. pronounce the yud heh mm. mm -hmm. So then they do know the name of God. Well, they did then. Because it has been passed <laughs> down to so the yeah, present right. generation. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can <around. laughs> yeah. If, you, if yeah. you ask those in the know, like the Temple <coughs> Institute, they kind of shut up. So oh. They don't okay. answer the they question. They don't answer the question. Yes, Charlene. Isn't the name of God El Shaddai? That is one, one of Elohim. his names. Title. What about Elohim? That's another, that's a title actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That literally is God. Mm -hmm. But it's, God it's not necessarily in his name. Okay. Okay. The, the, what we, I guess I would call it the highest name is the yud heh mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. How do you How do you spell that? It's in Hebrew. It's the yud, the hey, the vav, and the hey. That's where you see in the Bible the L O R D and all that. Right in yeah. the English mm -hmm. Bibles, where in the manuscripts where the yud hey vav <coughs> hey is is used, in your English translations you will see Lord in all right capital letters, yeah. okay. generally, mm -hmm. yeah. unless so you right have here, like right. a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like here. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the mm -hmm. yud This would be the yod heh vav heh mm -hmm. in the manuscript. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you have a, a translation like the scriptures or Hebrew language version or something like that, where they will actually keep the original Hebrew in the text. They could have done that in the English, but uh, most English translations will follow the pattern mm -hmm. set by the original King James Version back in the 1600s, and that's what they did then. And, and it's just kind of by mm -hmm. tradition mm -hmm. that they do that. Mm -hmm. But just remember that that, where you see all Lord, Lord in all capitals, that's the yod heh vav -Hey. If you see it in, in uh, capital and lowercase, it's, in, it's generally Elohim or something of mm -hmm. that nature. Yeah, or, or it just, might be or Adonai. Might be Adonai. Um, um, yeah, Adonai. Yeah. Yep, I've, uh, I've seen it vary a little bit, yeah. but mm -hmm. all, but in all cases when it's all capitals, mm -hmm. it's the yod heh vav -Hey. Okay. Okay. So um, where was I? Before bringing the blood. Yeah. Before yeah. Before bringing the blood of the bull into the holy mm -hmm. place, the high priest first brings in the censure of burning coals and incense. So let's look at Leviticus 16, 11 through 13, and answer the question of what is the purpose of that. Um, 16, 11 through 13. Sorry, and actually. Aaron shall bring the bowl of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall kill the, the bull as a sin offering, which is for himself. Then he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from the altar before the Lord with his hands full of sweet incense beaten fine and bring it inside the veil and he shall put the incense on the fire before the Lord that a, the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is on the, the testimony lest he die. Mm. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know, I, I, you read that and you think about well, what was it that we just read a little a minute ago about Nadab and Abihu? He mm -hmm. says they brought profane fire, I think is what the scripture that we read uses. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it says strange fire, mm -hmm. depends on your translation. Mm -hmm. I think they brought their own fire. <laughs> they brought something other than the fire that they were instructed to yeah. bring. Mm -hmm. They might have been doing it at the right time. They might have had everything else right. I'm not sure but they definitely brought something that they weren't supposed to bring, and that would be their own fire, mm -hmm. in this case. 
So what was, there was another little... The, the question? Yeah, oh, so the question that, is, yeah. uh, what is the purpose of the incense? Cover the mercy seat. Why? So that he will not die. He will not die. So in other words, Aaron is not supposed to see the mercy seat. Yeah. Okay. Imagine burning incense so thick that in that little confined space <laughs> behind the veil, you, don't you wouldn't see. be able to see three feet in front of your face. Okay. And of course, when Moses went up on the mountain, there was a cloud yep. there. Moses entered into that cloud, which was the which was in that cloud was the heart of the essence of God. The essence of God. Yeah. What about in Revelations like that it talks about prayers of the yeah. saints? Okay. Isn't yes, but that's a, right. Is that just uh, yes, a different? Yes, but this place is in? this is a different purpose here. The purpose of the the censer of incense here is to cover the mercy seat. And okay. in addition, from my days of Catholic Church. If that incense is so strong when you're in an enclosed area, the smoke from the incense is in your eyes and forces you to close your eyes, ah, which mm -hmm. is another way of mm -hmm. not seeing yeah. the Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Why do they keep you passing out? Good question. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm still here. <laughs> they went, <laughs> I imagine they did it fairly quickly. <laughs> yeah, I remember several years ago, um, somebody, came, I can't remember the gentleman's name now, came from Israel and had a bunch of artifacts and um, odds and ends, and, and he had a sample of the liquid form of the, uh, that is the same chemical makeup as the powdered incense that they burned on the altar. But he had it in a liquid form so you could smell it. Mm -hmm. And stuff it was very, very strong, very pungent smell. So I can imagine that burning it like something else. Mm -hmm. But it looks like yes. he didn't put the incense on that fire until he actually went into the veil. So wouldn't you think he would have seen it as soon as he went behind the veil? He didn't even have the incense on there yet. See what I'm saying? Mm. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so. Oh, I just went on. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine they, they've got it all down to exactly when he puts on the incense yeah, so that it maybe prevents him from, from seeing the maybe do mercy do seat. Mm -hmm. It's full yeah. of burning coals, though, which means that mm -hmm. it is producing you know, the beginnings yeah. mm -hmm. of the cloud as yeah. he's mm -hmm. entering. Yeah. 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 The common common incense. Incense. Yeah. That's yeah. true, yeah. yeah. They've, they've got I, it timed exactly right. Yeah. Check on the Temple Institute. Yeah. They, I yeah. think, probably tell you exactly when that happens. Those two must have presented pork before the altar. <laughs> that would be a good way to get killed. Yeah, it could be, but they are, were already knew that they weren't supposed to eat that, so. <laughs> right, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So well, also, you can, I mean, if you know you're not supposed to see, uh -huh. and you're and you're at this point, Aaron's sons have already um, died. Yeah, you know, you you have honor and respect for for mm -hmm. um, Yahweh, and you you so you would keep your eyes down. Mm -hmm. You could enter in and be looking at the incense and keeping your eyes down until mm -hmm. there was no. I mean. That produces to me the kind of the fear of Yahweh that we need to have, the fear of the Lord that we mm -hmm. need to have um, in that uh, mm -hmm. awe and reverence of Him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely is essential. One more, we, um, Ken. <laughs> I, I, would hear, I recall hearing something a couple of generations ago about tied a rope around the ankle of the that, priest. That is not true. Yeah. That, that, that is not true, no. So when they died in there, they could pull them out, but that's no. not, yeah. No, Did he have bells? The Jewish, no, they do not have the bells on it. The Jewish writings, no. It's apparently one of those stories that just kind of well, gets a li life of its own. Somebody so said, oh, they I ought to have a, and then all of a sudden it became true. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. I would imagine someone would have had to have gone in and what you would have to do to, for the pattern is look to see how they removed Nadab and Abihu, okay? Because mm -hmm. that's a biblical pattern of how they did it. 
what did they do? They brought in his cousins and they carried him at them out. Okay. So, but yeah, look look at the story on Nadab and Abihu again, and and that if the a priest died, that's probably how they removed him. No, the same way that Nadab and Abihu the removed. same thing. Like what? Hmm? They would have had to gone through the same thing though, with with bathing and the the white linen. Bringing the censer, yeah. Just to go in to get them. Probably. They have a by who out. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Look at look at the description. It tells in the Bible. Hmm. I don't have the verse right now, but you know, instead of speculating, we need to look to see what did the Bible say. How did they bring out Nadab and Abihu? And that's the pattern. Wait. Well, if priest number one died. Did, did they send in number two? I have no idea. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, we sit here and we talk about him dying. If you look at Jewish history, there really were not very many high priests that served from Aaron down. The greatest number of change in the number of priests, high priests, was right during, uh, actually during two times, when you had the Greek Seleucids coming mm -hmm. into power and when you had the Romans. You know, in the, during the Romans times, you had like three high priests that you went through in like one year. Okay. Up until then, and they didn't die in the Holy of Holies. They were either assassinated each other or were yeah. <laughs> taken out in other ways. But you know, go through and look at that history as you look at it. But you did not have the priests dying when they brought the offering. Okay. There just plain weren't that many high priests that served. Okay. So those high priests that served apparently did so with distinction. Because they're mm. just. You, Look at a Jewish history book. I don't have it with me right now, but I could, you know, pull one out that lists all of the high priests huh. that served from the time of Aaron. Huh. Okay, so this there was not something that you that happened. Okay. Also, in, in the time of the empires that, that Brenda mentioned, uh, were so corrupt that they didn't follow what was biblical. Right. The, yeah. the high priesthood was basically sold to the person who bribed the officials the most. You know, and they weren't necessarily a son of Aaron. Mm -hmm. you know, they, it was I don't know that some of them weren't on the side. I think hmm. they were all sons of Aaron, uh, but there was too many be, of, there was just a whole lot yeah. of them that they could beat. Well, by that time, the Ark wasn't there, so they didn't even have to. That's the true also. Wasn't worry about yes. looking at it. Right, after the Babylonian um, exile, the Ark was not in the temple. David? Uh, after the uh, uh, the uh, cleansing of the temple with uh, ha ha Hanukkah, mm -hmm. from that point, mm -hmm. that high priest was not even a Levite. Hmm. Really? Because uh, the Hasmoneans were were both kings. They they were of the priesthood, and then, yet they also served as kings. <coughs> okay, I. I, I uh, thought th th thought it had, uh, was the other way around that they were in the bloodline of David and could have been king, but but they cleansed the temple and no no Judah, Judah Maccabees was uh, was a priest mm -hmm. and what they weren't supposed to be was kings king. mm -hmm. yeah Judah Maccabees okay. was a priest um, so so you know we sit here and we sit here and speculate about having a rope around him that didn't happen okay the high priest didn't die. They had hardly any. They, they served their full length of time. And Jewish history records the names of all of the high priests, and there really weren't that many because they served their full term. Mm -hmm. Lifetime appointment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that lifetime, even though when they censused it was from 30 to 50 years old? So it didn't end at 50 for the high Yeah, price? I do not believe it did. Mm -hmm. Do not believe it did. Aaron served his full lifetime. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not authoritative on that, but you know you can look Jewish history. They'll list the, the high priest, and the only time you had a, a high turnover of high priests was during the corrupt regimes, yeah. where the priesthood was bought and sold. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So so no need for a rope. No need for bells. So let's let's move on here. So. The high priest didn't just go in the Holy of Holies once. He went in, as we see, a second time with mm -hmm. the blood of the bull, sprinkling the blood seven times. Mm -hmm. The manner of sprinkling was one time toward heaven and seven times toward the mercy seat. So let's look at Leviticus 16, 14. 
He shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the mercy seat on the east side. And before the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. So where is the east side? The entrance. It's the entrance. Yeah, so it's the entrance. So you didn't have to go around right. to another side of it. Just enter the veil, and it's right there. Yeah, he's, yeah, on yeah. The, he's on the east side. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, now the goat uh, for the Lord is sacrificed for the sins of the people. The high priest enters the Holy of Holies for a third time. Oh, he's in and out all day long. Uh, he sprinkles the blood of the goat in the same manner as that of the bull. Let's go to the very next verse here. Leviticus 16, verse 15. Ken. And he shall kill the goat of the sin offering which is for the people, bring its blood inside the veil, do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So he does the same thing. It implies the seven times again. It seems to be interesting that the two animals are distinct. The bull is for the priests, mm -hmm. and the goat is for the people. Yes, mm -hmm. very much so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it mean before the mercy seat? Is it right in front of it, or I think or if the word the is Ramim in the face of? I don't know. Look. Yeah, she's going to look up the word, and so we'll answer that. Yeah. It always helps to go back to the Hebrew. original language when there's a question on what it really means, because uh, you know. English trans we lose something in translation. Yeah. So we go back to the original language and look. Sometimes it has a much yeah. broader meaning. Well, than for you would think. is that uh, Hebrew word panim? So it's space. in the face, or you know, what would it mean to be mm. in the face or before the mercy seat? I would think it is be in view of it. Mm. Well, nice. Um, the, the temple and everything in it is facing east, east, so when the priest goes in there, he's facing to the west, so he would be face to face. Right, mm -hmm. and you're sprinkling it on the east That's side good. of the mercy seat. Yes. So I would imagine it would be right in front of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do they yeah. Which is what the word before no. implies in this yeah. context. Even though so they keep doing it, fair it stays on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the purpose of sprinkling the, sprinkling the blood of the bull and the goat on the mercy seat and on the altar? Let's go to the next bunch of verses. There's three slides here, so we'll go ahead and split this one up. So he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions for all their sins. And so he shall do for the tabernacle of meeting which remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. There shall be no man in the tabernacle of meeting when he goes in to make atonement in the holy place till he comes out that he may make atonement for himself, for his household, and for all the assembly of Israel. And one more. And he shall go out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it, and shall take some of the blood of the bull and some of the blood of the goat and put it on the horns of the altar all around. Then he shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times, cleanse it, and consecrate it from the unclean, uncleanness of the children of Israel. So okay. what was the purpose of the sprinkling blood? To atone. Yeah. To atone. Uh -huh. And concentrate. Atone for. Cleanse and concentrate. Concentrate. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Mickey just asked me if they cleaned the blood off afterwards. Yeah. When we read this sentence or this passage, no, because it's the blood that cleans it. Okay? The blood that cleans it. Is is that similar to forgiveness? Uh, in a way. The, the, the atonement means to cover, okay, or to protect. Okay, so the blood is there to cleanse it, to provide a protective covering okay um you know, why does the tabernacle need atonement because it, it didn't sin. sin 
it's contaminated by being in the midst of the people. It's contaminated, yeah. So you, it's not for forgiveness in the way that we think about it, because the tabernacle didn't sin, the altar didn't sin, okay? The holy place didn't sin. The holy place didn't sin. Okay. It's because it dwells among the uncleanness of the people. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this atonement protects the tabernacle, the altar, and the people. And what does it need to be protected from? The fire from God. Okay? The fire from God. Okay? When God is present in the tabernacle, his presence is holy. His presence is a consuming fire. If you go before God without the protective covering, you will be burned up. Yes. It is a physical reality. Okay, It's not a rule that you can break and maybe the consequences will happen and it won't happen. Yeah. It's a physical <coughs> law that you break. You jump mm -hmm. off a cliff, you will fall. Yes. Okay? You come into the presence of God without protective covering, you will God. be consumed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Made because we're flesh. Mm -hmm. And God is spirit. spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when people say, let the fire fall, they don't really understand. <laughs> what uh, when they sing the songs and yeah. all that. Okay. But it's the fire of God, yes, the fire of God will do two things. It will purify mm -hmm. those who belong to him, and it will consume those who do not. Yes. It is a physical reality. Okay? Mm -hmm. You jump off that cliff if you've got a protective covering, you know, the, the um, what would it be? The parachute. The, jet, the parachute? There we go. The parachute. You're okay. But if you don't have the parachute, you're going to die. Yes. Thank goodness for you, Sheila. Amen. He's, yes. He's our holy parachute in this analogy. <laughs> Or what are the firefighters when yeah. they go into the fire? So what? So what does atonement mean? This cover. Covering. Covering. Yeah. It means covering, and it protects. In this case, it protects the tabernacle, the altar, and the people from that fire of God. Um, and un. And, it, and it, it, it's it's a covering for an uncleanness. Too. And uncleanness is not necessarily sin. Right? What do you do? Yeah. What causes uncleanness? What are some of the things that cause uncleanness? Anybody know? Being yeah. You touch a dead person. You touch a dead, dead person. Yeah. 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 Is that bad to touch a dead person? Yeah. No. 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 What are some other that, things that cause yeah, uncleanness? Our words. Our words cause uncleanness, and those could be a sin. Marital yeah. relations. Marital relations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're supposed to repopulate the earth. We've got to engage in marital relations, but that act causes uncleanness. Mm -hmm. A woman's cycle. A woman's cycle causes mm -hmm. uncleanness. So what what does you know what is the consequence of uncleanness in in this um, time context here? What does it what does it do to a person? If you are unclean, you could not enter the temple. Oh, right. Right. That's right. right. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Can't come into so the if you touch the dead body, you could not come into the presence. Temple. Right. Okay. So yeah. what is the problem here? Well, all of these things that are not sin, that lead to uncleanness, all of these things are about the mortality of man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Especially touching a dead body. It is being touched with death. It is being touched with our own mortality, okay? We've got an everlasting, eternal life God. But because, what was Adam's sin? What did it lead to? Death. It left lead to death. Yes. Because of Adam's sin, we are now yes. mortal. We cannot help it. Yes. We will be unclean. We can't avoid it because we're mortal, okay? So we need that protective covering to cover our uncleanness, to cleanse us from our mortality, per se, or to cover us because of our mortality, mm -hmm. so we can enter into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. He wants to have fellowship with us. Mm -hmm. But because death is our destiny, mm -hmm. we can't have fellowship with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
unless we're protected. And the other thing that other mm -hmm. things to think about uncleanness in the in the biblical sense here is if a careful reading of the scripture you will see that Yeshua himself was rendered unclean mm -hmm. on many occasions. Specifically what comes to mind is the the woman who touched him, the woman with the issue of blood that touched him, mm -hmm. rendered him unclean. So what is the remedy for uncleanness? It's not sin. He didn't sin. So the, what is that remedy? To wash. To wash. To wash. Mm -hmm. to wash yourself, to change your garments, and in the, e and in the evening you will be clean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Romans so 5, 12. So you eat a pork chop. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, you can be made unclean. Yeah. Okay. So Romans 5.12, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through that sin, thus death spread to all men. Okay? Can't help it, guys. <laughs> because all have sinned. Okay? Is that uh, mm. Romans 5.12? Romans 5.12. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, um, Pastor, was it Pastor Mark that said this one? For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there is no law. The sin was there, okay? Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even mm. over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgressions of Adam. What's that? Yes? Mean? Yeah. Well, this is Romans 5.12 through... 14 here. 14. Okay. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, yes. even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. What, okay, so you go and you sin, uh -huh. and then you wash yourself. Uh-huh. What did you say? You go, you sin, That's and right. then you no, we're wash. We're talking about it. uncleanness. Mm -hmm. Which is different Which than is sin. Different okay, than not sin. sin. Yeah. Okay. You touch a, let's let's go from, let, you touch a dead body or mm -hmm. a whatever, and you become unclean in that way without mm -hmm. not sinning. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Um, and you cleanse yourself, you bathe and you do all that. Uh-huh. Why are you not clean at that point why do you have to wait until evening i know that it's the beginning of a new day yeah, that, that's just the point but i think that was the point the new, the, the, new beginning beginning. the new day mm -hmm. the new yeah. day a new day yeah okay yeah you know, i think some of the things about mm -hmm. that god asks of people don't have an explanation, but I think <laughs> that they are to make us realize that, in fact, we are unclean, and make us think about that. Fact. Every mm -hmm. single thing that God tells us to do, especially those things that don't make sense to us, mm -hmm. are all about Messiah. Right. Yeah, all the, about Messiah. Uh, the uh, red heifer. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're the cleansing of leprosy, exactly. going through that. The, the, Just um, the bizarre rituals. What does it all mean? The bizarre ritual that Pastor Mark talked about today, mm -hmm. about the woman being accused falsely mm -hmm. of adultery. Mm -hmm. All of those mm -hmm. have incredible messianic um, significance. And we talked about every one of those in our book, Shadows of Messiah. <laughs> Just thought I'd mention those again. <laughs> Actually, there's one in each one. <laughs> Ashes of the Red Heifer is in volume one. Volume two is uh, the cleansing for leprosy. Volume three is the woman falsely yeah, accused. I think it's either volume three they or volume four. They all run four. together. Yeah. So, but they've all they've all got one of those. Yes. Volume three is the woman falsely accused. Mm -hmm. Volume four is the blood avenger. All of those things that don't make sense. Every one of those is a very strong shadow of Messiah. Yes. Yes. So I just thought we'd throw that out while we're at it. Commercial break. Commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Are we ready to go on? Yeah. And one last comment here. Where does atonement begin? With the, the priest. The high priest. 
tabernacle. Okay, the high priest, okay, the, the, but the high priest offers uh, a sacrifice for sin. Then he goes about the process of atoning for, oh. cleansing everything. And he starts inside. He starts with the tabernacle. He starts with the Holy of Holies. And he works out. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so let's, uh, before we go on to this next little section, let's look at Leviticus <coughs> 16, 21 through 22. Who is next? Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat to confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions concerning all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat and shall send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a suitable man. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to an uninhabited land and he shall release the goat in the wilderness. And so you see a little picture there of the, the high priest and the two goats. Mm -hmm. And let's also look at Isaiah 1, verse 18. Back here to Nikki, back up at the front. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If so, it's not too much of a distraction, sure. if it is, then um, what would a suitable man be? What's that? So what I was just looking up. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking. Yes, yeah, so I'm just, just looking like that up. <laughs> okay. It's it's the Hebrew word eti, and it means timely or ready. Oh. So it's somebody who is ready to do it. Hmm. And it also the Strong's definition also says fit. It comes from a root word meaning time. Okay? So a man who was ready. Yeah, so we see that the uh, high priest confesses the sins of Israel over that live goat. The high priest again pronounces the name of, of the Lord and all the people prostrate themselves. The goat is to be released into the wilderness, bearing away the sins of Israel. So in practice, the goat was taken and pushed backwards over a cliff so that it wouldn't return, bringing back the sins of the people. But he didn't want them coming back. Mm -hmm. So, so when, when it dies, the scarlet thread tied to the temple door would then turn, spontaneously turn white if Israel's sins mm -hmm. were forgiven, according to this Isaiah passage that mm -hmm. we just read. Here. So the high priest bathes, puts on regular priestly garments, finishes the sin offerings, and brings the rams for the burnt offering. So after completing the offerings, the high priest bathes again, puts on new linen garments, again these are the white ones I believe, and enters the Holy of Holies for the fourth time um, to retrieve that censure that had the, the incense. So then the high priest bathes a final time puts on regular priestly garments and offers the regular evening sacrifices. So he is one busy dude <laughs> all day long. So reading, five times. <laughs> yeah, reading in some of the history books, they went through a week's long preparation for this day. Yeah, they basically, the week, at least the week leading up, they were pretty much sequestered in the temple. And just going through the rituals and going over Making what they sure needed to do. Making sure they're letter perfect. Yeah, everything had to be absolutely perfect. What's a censer? A censer is a something that you carry a, a um, lit coals with. So like okay. on like your um, barbecue, the it's the part, uh, the fire pan, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Is, this, is this once a year that they did all this? Yes, once a year on Yom Kippur. Oh. Okay. It's the only time they did now, this. Now, we see here that the Talmud records that 40 years before the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, mm -hmm. that the lock for the uh, and What did happen 40 the years Lord. before the destruction? Yeah. <laughs> Yeshua's <laughs> crucifixion. Crucifixion. Okay. So, okay that the lock for the goat for the Lord came up in the priest's left hand each of those 40 years. 
Hmm. What are the what are the odds of that? Brenda <laughs> can tell you. You know, if you one half to the a coin. power. What's that? <laughs> one half to the fortieth power. Yeah, which is yeah. just way up there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and the scarlet thread that's on the door stopped turning white. Mm -hmm. The temple doors would not stay closed. Those are huge. Huge. Wow. Seventy feet wow. tall, about three feet thick, and mm -hmm. weigh tons. And they would it took not. Twenty stay men to open and close them. Oh and they would open on their own. And the westernmost light, that is the middle lamp on that on the temple menorah, it's one right in the middle. Um, it was always to be kept burning, and it represents the Messiah, and it would not stay lit. Mm -hmm. It would keep going out all by itself. Mm -hmm. And this was the state of things for that 40 years from Yeshua's um, ascension essentially until the um, uh, destruction of the temple in 70 wow. AD. Which was on what day? A little sidebar. What day in the Ninth biblical of calendar was the destruction? Ninth of August. Ninth of August. Ninth of August. Ninth of August. Okay. So like happens. July, early August. It's mm -hmm. right after we get back. We're back That's before so. the ninth mm. of this year. Good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's a lot of things that have happened on the ninth of August. Yes. They gave away the Gaza on the ninth of August. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. There was a lot of things. World yeah. War One started on the ninth of August. Mm -hmm. Hitler's yeah. declaration for the final solution was made on the ninth of August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, the first of August. 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 All, all kinds of programs in, in Jewish history. Yeah, oh, began on the first of all. Yeah. Okay, so let's go on. Okay, so we can compare the 40 years from Yeshua's crucifixion to the destruction of the temple to the 40 days from a little one to Yom Kippur. So there's a parallel there. The 40 days are days of self-examination mm -hmm. and repentance. The books are closed at the end of the 40-day <coughs> period on Yom Kippur. The sentence is determined, or the sentence determining, mm -hmm. determined during this time is sealed mm -hmm. to be carried out. The 40 years after Yeshua's crucifixion were a period of testing and trial. What will Israel do during these 40 years? Many of the Jewish people believed in Yeshua. We read that in Acts where thousands were saved in a day, thousands of the priests, and so on. Um, so they were sealed in the book of life by the Holy Spirit but the nation as a whole did not believe and judgment came on Israel they were, the temple was destroyed and less than a hundred years later they were totally exiled from the land mm -hmm. and it lay desolate until 1948 mm -hmm. when they returned wow yeah that's a little capsule of history. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so any comments on our comments stream there at all? Okay. Not, not really. I okay. mean, we've already covered it. As, uh, David D. actually would like the ladies that have soft voices to speak up. <laughs> okay. Or Diane. Diane, yes. Okay. All right. So, part D then, prophetic fulfillment. What is the Day of Atonement? Or what is the prophetic fulfillment of the Day of Atonement? Mm -hmm. So, the Day of Atonement, like all of the Moedim, like all of the feast days, is a rehearsal of God's plan for the final disposition of sin, whether to forgiveness and eternal life, or condemnation and eternal punishment. When the scarlet thread tied to the temple door didn't turn white, the sins of national Israel were not forgiven. Okay, let's take a look at what John the Baptist said in... Did that ever happen? Hmm? Up to this, did that ever happen? What, that the, sin, that the thread turned white? It did not turn white. Yes, in the four, 40 years yeah, but leading yeah, up before that. that. I, don't I don't know. I don't know. I would, I would guess that it probably did. <laughs> yeah, given uh, exiled off to Babylon and yeah. Syria, probably. Yeah, I don't know how long they were actually doing the the scarlet thread when that custom or tradition started. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, of good information about um, what the temple life or what 
general society was like in the time of Yeshua from Alfred Edersheim's books. Uh, he was a writer back in the, a scholar back in the 1800s, so most of his books are in the public domain. There's one called The Life and Times of Yeshua the Messiah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another one about temple practices and stuff, and they're very detailed and, mm. and quite, quite good. What? So. How do you spell it? What's the name? Uh, Edersheim. That's S-H-E-I-M. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Alfred. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So most of his books are in public domain, so you can find PDF documents on, well, online. Well, there are easy. e-books, too, because I have hmm? There yeah. are e-books that yes. I have. Yeah. 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 yeah, you can do it that way. You can actually download them if you don't mind an e-book. If you want a hardback one, you can yeah. do that too. Yeah. They, he did write in you know the 1880s, so is it, it is in the yeah. style. Is it contemporary of Bollinger and, yeah. and okay. many of the other uh, Zionist scholars from that time yeah. too? Yeah, so. Okay, so let's read John 129. And where are we? Back up front? Yes. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So what is the final disposition of Mm. sin? And how is this like that goat for Azazel, the scapegoat in our Yom Kippur service? It's taken away. It's taken away. Okay? It's going to be finally Mm -hmm. taken away. It's not just taken away, it's destroyed. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. that goat was destroyed. Mm-hmm. So he was destroyed, but the Bible did not require that it be mm-hmm. destroyed. Okay. Yeah, that, that was, that was a little history tradition. snippet, what they actually yeah. did. Yeah, the yeah. problem was the goat kept coming back because it was too <laughs> populated, and so all of a sudden this goat that was supposed to have <laughs> carried away the sins of the people shows up in your backyard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that goat. <laughs> There was something not right about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they decided yeah. they would take a course of action that would prevent it. I yeah. saw that go the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dis- dispen- disposition. Disposition. Dispos- what does that mean? Disposition means um, how it is finally taken care of. What are we going to do with it? Yes. Um, and so let's look now at Mark 1, 4, and 5. And see what John's ba- John the Baptist message is. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Okay, this word baptism is a church word. We all know what it means to be baptized, right? Mm-hmm. You yes. confess your faith in Yeshua and you get dunked in the water and you come back up and you're Christian. Okay? That's that's our mindset. Okay? The concept of baptism, baptizo, means just a ceremonial washing. Okay? It's a, in the Hebrew it would correspond to mikvah. So, when you are unclean, what do we do again? Wash. We have a mikvah and put on clean garments and wear clean. Okay, so when John is up here baptizing them, he is encouraging them to mikvah, to ceremonially cleanse themselves and put on new garments. Okay, so that's that's our contents. He's not sitting there dunking them and saying, I'm baptizing you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. He's not saying that. Uh, or the Father, okay. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or that either. <laughs> okay. Yes. It's interesting. We saw Mikvah in Israel, and you would walk down one side, and then when you came up, uh huh, none of the water from you coming back up would, would have its own, you know, path or, or ditch that it would go down, so it never mixed. Or the person going down dirty or sinful or doing uh-huh. the atonement would ever step in that water going back down. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So that water has been washed you clean and then it flows back around into the living stream, hopefully, from which it came. And you're not you're not sharing the bath water. (laughs) Okay. So 
thinking about that, what is John's um, message and how does it compare to the purpose of the 40 days that we have from Elul 1 to Tishri 10, to Yom Kippur? Repentance. It's repentance, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you repent, what do we know about that word, repent? Is it say, I'm sorry? Change, change your life. Change your life. It's to what? I think that it's interesting a baptism of repentance and remission of sins. Uh -huh. The mitzvah that we just talked about, the washing from the Old Testament was about mm -hmm. uncleanness. This is shifted gears to the remission of sins. Yes. I mean, Israel is always told to repent and when they repent they're told to wash their garments, to put on clean clothes. You know, you look at Jacob when he came into the land, settled there at Shechem, Okay, you had Jacob basically not where he's supposed to be because of that. You had the intermingling with the Canaanites. Dinah gets uh, captured and, and raped. Levi and Simeon go in and kill everybody of the city because of that rape. You know, <laughs> God said, like, Hello, Jacob. <laughs> you guys need to turn around and repent. He says, Get all the idols out of your camp, bury them under the terebinth tree there that Abraham built the altar at. Bury them there and, do, and wash your clothes and be clean. Okay. So, yeah. It's there. All right. So, how does that compare with those 40 days? From a little one to Yom Kippur? Well, oh. John's telling them to do what? Well, John, John's, it's the same thing. It's, it's repent, but you have to go to and, and, and confess your sin and go to your brother or sister that you have sinned against and, and ask them before um, for forgiveness mm -hmm. and repent for it to them for whatever it is that you said or did. Mm -hmm. and, and then you can come right. before the Lord. Uh -huh. And there's a, a passage in the uh, that says that if you come mm -hmm. with your offering and you know that somebody has ought against mm -hmm. you or you have you need to leave your offering right mm -hmm. there, go make it right, then come back and offer. Right. So right. so the important thing is to is the restoration of relationships. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Before you can bring that to God. Mm -hmm. Or before you offer, you do your offering. Right, the 40 days there are a time of self-examination, of making restitution, of writing relationships, and this is really the essence of what John is telling these guys. Turn back, repent, go back to your God, make things right, mm -hmm. then be cleaned and start anew, Yes, a new beginning. I like that restoration of re of relationships mm -hmm. because I think mm -hmm. particularly in our world and even like that we forget about we're such a technical or whatever it, that it's really the restoration of relationship. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's bringing back um, the love of God to um, into mm -hmm. into our lives. Mm -hmm. And that leads us very nicely to the next set of passages we're reading. Thank you very much. We are going to look at, in this next set of scriptures we're looking at, we're going to be paying attention to who is our Redeemer and what is his desire for all people. So let's do that. Let's go through these. Isaiah 54, 8. With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you says the Lord, your Redeemer. Okay, and remember when you're reading to keep your voice projecting, okay? And then Micah 7, 18 and 19. Mm. Do you want to read? Um, Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. He will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. And let's keep going there. Second Peter 3 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. 
And Ezekiel 18.23. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his ways and live? Yeah. And Psalm 103, 11-14. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers mm. that we are dust. Mm. Mm. So who mm. is our redeemer? The Lord. The Lord. the Lord. Only him is our redeemer. And what is his desire? The nuns should perish. The all should come to repentance. Yeah, the nuns should perish. That everybody would come to repentance. That all would turn away from their evil ways and turn back to him. He doesn't take, you know, as Ezekiel said there, it's one of my favorite passages there, mm -hmm. Ezekiel 18.23. He doesn't delight when he has to destroy the wicked. He wants them to come to repentance. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. Mm -hmm. Every one of us. Brenda, I think, too, yeah. that we lose sight that the Lord, many of us lose sight that the Lord wants everyone to come to repentance. He wants everyone there. So mm -hmm. our prayers for those who are not walking need to be that. Yeah. That the Lord would, that their mm -hmm. eyes would be opened and yes. the scales fall down their ears, yes. that they would have ears mm -hmm. to hear yes. the word of the Lord to them and that the Lord is wooing them and for them to turn particularly those leaders that we don't want to, that we yes. have a hard time identifying with. Yes. That yeah. God, just because they, he still wants them um, exactly. to, to turn and, and repent. And you know, and that's true. You know, as, as the kingdom of Judah was um, reaching its end, it was plagued by a couple of kings who were more evil than any in the past. You had King Manasseh. Uh, King Manasseh was you know, basically his evil action sealed the fate of Judah. He put a statue or a, an idol to Molech in the temple. Okay, talk about an abomination of desolation. Okay, he caused his sons from all of his fir wives, firstborn, to all be sacrificed in the fire of Molech. Okay. He did temple. more evil than even the Amorites mm -hmm. that God displaced mm -hmm. and brought in the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And because of his sins, judgment was inescapable on Judah. Mm -hmm. But Manasseh, at the end of his life, repented. Mm -hmm. He turned away from his evil ways. Okay. Mm -hmm. He turned back to the God of his father mm -hmm. David. You know, the implication in the scripture is that even though Manasseh did all of those horrible things, mm -hmm. causing destruction mm -hmm. to fall on his people, yet he had forgiveness mm -hmm. at the end of his life. Mm -hmm. okay? Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Now, his son Ammon did worse. I mean, Manasseh repented and started cleaning out all the garbage that he did. Ammon came in and took over, and he was even worse than Manasseh. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, you know, we knew that judgment was going to fall. Diane just said what Carol said, so true, with exclamation marks. Yes, we need to be praying for eyes to be open, because that's God's will. If we want to know what God's will in our life is, there it is, part of it, okay? Yeah. It's 5.30. 5.30, excellent place to stop, actually. We kind of got off a little. Uh, I think we'll be a, <laughs> just a little. Now, we talked about what atonement was, and I think that's really important, the difference between uncleanness and sin. Mm -hmm. The exciting yeah. thing, if I can say this, I don't, the exciting thing is that God wants to partner with us to pray for these people. He has said, would you please do this? Would you please partner so that I can work in their lives? Mm -hmm. And, and so without our prayers, then, you know, I pray for people as I'm driving down the road. Lord, I don't know if anyone's ever prayed for that person. Mm -hmm. So would you please reach out to him? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it needs to go one step further, too, and say, 
Okay, Holy Spirit. I need me if you want me to be your tool. Mm -hmm. So Amen. you right. pray and then say, I'm willing for you to lead. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, we don't want all those people to be jumping off the cliffs without the parachute, without the blood of Yeshua protecting them. Close in prayer. Okay, we will um, <laughs> pick it up at page 99, top of page 99 next week. We will be meeting for the next two weeks, and then we'll take a break. So, for a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, and okay. okay, Father God, we love you so much, and we thank you. We thank you that Yeshua died for us, that his blood is an atonement for us. It cleanses us. It protects us. It allows us to come into God's presence, into your presence, Lord. And we just are so grateful that we can come into your presence, that we can worship you, that we can have a relationship with you. We just pray, Father, that um, those who don't know you, yes, Father, that their eyes and ears would be open. Lord, the people that we come in contact on a daily basis, that you would give us a love for them. Father, for our unsaved loved ones, our friends, our families who don't know you, Lord, that their eyes, their ears would be open, that they would come to a love and a relationship with you through the blood of Yeshua that was shed for the remission of their sins as well as ours. We just thank you, Father, for your presence here today. We thank you for your Sabbath and your time that we can delight in you and just come together and worship you, talk about you, fellowship with fellow believers, and just enjoy this day that you set apart for us. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. We'll see we only got week. to five pages. I know. I was looking at. <laughs> we got a problem. We're working on this.